You are listening to Artistic Finance, Show 62. This is the second of four bonus episodes following the magic show Flavors of Magic as it develops from a virtual event to an in-person live production. Today we check in with Sarah Crasson about the details for the first Flavors Live. Without further ado, let's get to the show. You're listening to Artistic Finance Podcast, where your host, Ethan Steimel, interviews successful artists, leaders, and investors to help educate and inspire artists to grow their wealth. Welcome to the show, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Ethan Steimel, broadcasting from an apartment on 62nd Street in New York City. In our previous episode, we learned about Flavors of Magic and mentioned the live show would be in August. Well, there have been some changes, and we'll get an update today. The first part of this episode was recorded on July 18th, 2021, and the second part was recorded on July 31st. Now, let's get to the interview. Sarah, welcome again. Here we are. Thanks. Part two of Flavors of Magic. And this time we're going to talk about an in-person show. So your first season was seven virtual shows, and that was 2020. Now it's 2021, and you're hoping to do in-person Flavors of Magic shows. I guess, can you tell us sort of what your plan is? 2021 is the year of Flavors of Magic Live. We're going to do it. To say that I have a plan is perhaps an overstatement. (laughs) Well, okay, let me me ask you this. What is your long-term goal with Flavors of Magic? Like in 10 years, where will Flavors of Magic be? I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to have to see where it takes me. But it's not it's not that it's not to sort of be so successful that David Copperfield gets moved out of his theater and Flavors of Magic gets <laughs> moved in for a permanent install in Vegas. That's not your goal. No, but but anytime he wants to perform on my show, he's welcome. Uh, David Copperfield, if you are listening, <laughs> anytime you want to be part of Flavors of Magic, you are more than welcome. <laughs> Let me also add anytime you want to come on this podcast. You are more than welcome. Okay, glad we got that out of the way. Uh, my goal right now, and it's it's a goal that changes. My goal for the next year, I guess, would be to have some live shows to give diverse artists, diverse magicians, a chance to show off and do the material that's really them and shows off their personality and style, both for the public because. The public certainly has a vision of magic that's a white dude in a tuxedo and a top hat. And for the magic community, because I certainly hear from people who schedule lectures and conferences, you know, that that old story, oh, I'd love to have some women on my panel, but I just don't know where to find any women who speak on this topic. Well, here's a here's a place you can look. I see. Okay. So your goal starting this year with in-person is to sort of showcase magicians in a way, connect them maybe to other jobs, or at least put them out in the public arena, public face, so that way people can find them? Absolutely. I would love to help diverse magicians get access to more gigs, better gigs, the kind of gigs they want to do. Because it's like it sort of if you go on America's Got Talent, you're now out there in the world and people will start finding you. Right. The hope is magicians can perform for Flavors of Magic and get out there in the world and people will find them. Well, or opportunities sometimes go the other way and find the organization. They'll say, hey, you're looking for a magician. You could call, uh, you could you could phone a, a random magician with a website or you could reach out to the organization and say, hey, you put on a show. Who do I, who do I want for my event? So just out of curiosity, if somebody were in St. Charles, Missouri, that's where I'm from. If somebody in St. Charles, Missouri listens to this and they're a magician and they say, oh, oh, I like this Flavors of Magic show. That's a great idea. And they sort of want to put on a show of their own. Could they sort of call you and say, hey, could we partner with you or could we borrow your name to sort of put on a local show? Is that of anything that would interest you? Well, I'd say let's talk. If you're interested in putting on a show and, and you want to support diversity and, ma- and magic, I am more than happy to talk to you. I have performers from out of state who want to come into New York to do the live flavors. I would love to you know, send flavors, you know, have, have the flavors experience available elsewhere. So I would say, absolutely. Let's talk about that. And I, just because I've been on the receiving end of paychecks working for theater 
It's not a lack of work that I have. It's a lack of work that pays money. With your live in-person shows, are you going to be paying the performers and the staff that helps out? Absolutely. Absolutely. With the live production, everybody's getting paid. We're starting off small, and so the paychecks, like my apartment, will be modest. Uh, <laughs> but adequate. But, <laughs> but, but attractive. So I'm, I'm going to guarantee a, a, a paycheck for, the, for, the first, uh, for our first shows. And we'll see how it does. And I, I have the idea if if we sell out, if we do well, I would be more than happy to supplement that. Okay. And you, of course, don't have to reveal your entire budget. But I am curious. You said you're starting out small. What is your budget? And sort of what is your plan to either not lose a ton of money or I guess what's your budget? I'm still I, I'm, I'm still laying out exactly what the what the budget is, what, what it's going to cost for the first show. I think I'm going to end up either guaranteeing or advancing about $500. It's going to be for two shows in the same the same night. So we're going to do a seven o'clock show and a nine o'clock show. So we get the room for one night and we turn it over. We'll see how it does. If I can ask, what is the venue and where is sure, it Sure, the show is going to be at the Russian Samovar on August 5th. It's upstairs. The Russian Samovar is this lovely restaurant. And they have an upstairs space that's a parlor space with some sofas and chairs. And we're going to have the upstairs seven o'clock show and a nine o'clock show and about 30 people in the room. So it'll be an intimate show. The Russian Samovar is on 52nd Street and 8th Avenue. So it's right in the theater district. It's a great location for us. Yeah, it's a beautiful venue, beautiful restaurant and beautiful parlor upstairs. It is. Okay, fantastic. So you pretty much have your venue. I assume you also have your performers and your staff and everything? I'm about, I would say, 80% of the way there. I've talked to everybody. I just can't nail it down and say it's done until the contract's been signed, uh, literally or metaphorically, you know, until we have a, a firm deal with the venue. Okay, let's wrap up this part about Flavors in Person. Very exciting. 2021, the year of Flavors in Person. Flavors Live. Flavors Live. Flavors <laughs> Live. My final question for you, which is going from virtual to now an in-person, what is sort of one thing that you've learned trying to put on this in-person show just that you've learned from doing that process? I think the big difference so far is that I want to get this right in a in a more robust way. The the virtual show, everybody's in their living room performing, you know, performing out of their their home studio. Uh, it's all kind of on a on a shoestring, on a on a not even on a shoestring. It's on a whisper, and it kind of it didn't matter in the same way. This matters. I want to get it right. I want to do it properly and make sure that I have all the resources that I need and. You know, I'm laying out the money to do it. So I've, I've, got, I've got skin in that game. Fantastic. Okay, where can people find out more about you or about Flavors of Magic? At flavorsofmagic.com. We're also Flavors of Magic on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram. I'm magician at law. If you want to talk about flavors or you have ideas, you want more information, you can email me. And I'm Sarah at sarahcrassen.com. Sarah. Welcome back. There has been a delay in Flavors of Magic. What's going on? Explain it to us. Yeah, well, well, we did have a little change. A few things changed. The world happened as, as things are in the time of COVID. It's hard to plan. A day is like a month uh, in terms of things that can change and uh, schedules that can move. There's been uh, a spike in the Delta variant and the CDC issued some new recommendations and there are new concerns about transmission of the Delta variant, even in vaccinated people. The CDC came out with some new recommendations. A bunch of different states are reinstating mask mandates and the governor of New York is recommending masking indoors again, which makes it really hard for us to have an event where people are drinking together in a small enclosed space. Also, a lot of people are concerned. So I've been, I've been hearing concerns from people who were going to come about coming to a show in a small enclosed space with, with everything that's going on. So we decided for everybody's both safety and comfort that we're going to push it out. 
And as hard as it is to do uh, about a week and a half before our show date, we are rescheduled. So we talked to the venue and they completely understood because they have to follow the rules too. So, so it didn't come as a surprise to them. Uh, we got a new date in October. So again, hard to plan. Who knows where we'll be in October? Our fingers are crossed and hopefully we'll be able to, to hold it then. So October 14 is our new date. And I keep saying that I'm going to be at the 7 p.m. show. I'm still going to say that, but October 14th is 10 weeks away. It's so far away. There's an interesting tension between you, you want to plan far enough in advance that you know, people's calendars are free and they can plan that far ahead. They can they, they have space in their in their day. It also, especially in this in the covid world, very hard to imagine where we're going to be at that time to, to just push it out a couple of weeks didn't seem to make sense. My my Ouija board doesn't work any better than anybody else's. It's <laughs> I certainly can't predict what's going to happen any better than the CDC. All I can do is give it some time, pick a date and roll the dice. Vegas magic shows. I know those were all coming back online. Are they delayed more now or are they still moving forward? A bunch of them had already opened. In fact, I was just talking to a friend of mine in Vegas the other day and he didn't say that things were canceling. Uh, it looks like they're still selling tickets for different shows. So, okay. So they haven't rescheduled. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not shutting down. Of course, they have enormous theaters and perhaps are selling reduced capacity so that people can socially distance in the theater. It's one thing, I think, if you're in a big theater and you're sitting six feet away from everybody else and you've got your mask on, that's maybe one thing. We couldn't do that. We have, it's a, you know, it's a small, like 30 people in a living room kind of space. So uh, not terribly socially distant. Yeah, I remember when I saw Penn and Teller in Vegas, the theater is massive. And that was in the before times when you could pack in as many people. But even so, the theater was maybe half full. But I could see how they could space out people and still be selling as much as they were in the before times. Yeah, I mean, they, they have a, a two-tier theater. There's a big balcony space. you know. And if they have to have reduced capacity and not everybody who wants to go can get a ticket, then so be it. This is the price we pay for our safety and not having our event be a... Uh, a super spreader. <laughs> a killer. <you> know? <laughs> I went to a magic show and then I died. And uh, yeah, we don't want that. Well, no, look, nobody wants that. Nobody wants nobody that. Wants that. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about, you know, we want our show to kill, but that's not what we mean. That's not at all. <laughs> Can I ask you a couple more questions about flavors? This delay has not cost you any money, right? Because you didn't have to put any money to get the venue Correct. solidified. And you didn't have to advance any of the magicians right. or anything. So this is just postponing. So yeah, luckily, luckily it, it didn't it, it didn't require an outlay. Although I was prepared to do it. So can you just could you just describe the show, like what your actual show is? Because I forget that different magic shows are different. What is flavors? Because you said it's in a thirty person intimate venue. What will the actual show look like? We're gonna have uh, two acts, and uh, this this show I'm gonna host. So we have two fantastic performers. RJ the Magician is a comedy magician. He's going to do, I don't know how to explain, like small to medium-sized magic. It's a small venue. So, you know, we're not bringing in lions and tigers and, and doing a huge show. Making a helicopter appear out of nowhere. Right, right. We're, we're not doing that, that kind of magic. It's, it's going to be small and intimate, and there'll be some audience participation, COVID conditions permitting, and if people are comfortable with it. Then our headliner is Eric Walton, who is a fantastic mentalist, brilliant mind reader, very clever. Uh, as he said to me the other day, gobs will be smacked. You know, brilliant, mind boggling. And uh, I'm going to host. I'll be performing a little bit myself. I'll do a shorter set. Oh, fantastic. All right. Bringing, bringing my performing partner, Bamberg, who is a bear. An actual bear? Well, he says so. Okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, so it'll be three in uh, advancing the the goals of Flavors of Magic. It's going to be three very different voices, three very different styles of performance, because magicians are different, and we all we we express our art in different ways based on our backgrounds and interests and personal styles. 
So you're going to see three very different takes on the art. Um, and then another thing, just very basic questions I want to ask you, which is how much are tickets? Tickets are $50 and they include two drinks. The Russian samovar will have a bar set up and when you come in, you'll get two drink tickets. And those are good for beer, wine, mixed drinks, and especially their their specialty vodkas. Amazing. Okay, well, fifty dollars sounds like nothing when you say two drinks are included. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a it's a great evening out package. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then how long is the show? The show is an hour and fifteen minutes. Hour and fifteen minutes. Why did you choose that length of show? Um, it felt about right. I mean, there there was no kind of secret calculus to it you know what i take that back there 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 was there was a little bit of practical thought to it i had been talking to some folks in vegas about how long you know, a show without an intermission and uh, you know to kind of create a, a an arc for a magic show and that was about the right amount of time maybe maybe they go a little bit longer in las vegas but we felt for an intimate show a little bit shorter it's because it's kind of it's a little more intense. It's happening right in front of you. It's you're you're in the mix of it, and you know it's not like a big theater show where you kind of can relax and sit back a little bit more, because it's it's all it's all so close. You feel you feel more involved. So we felt like that was right about the right amount of time. And then also jumping back a little bit, why why fifty dollars for the tickets? Is that what you decided to break even, or how did you figure that out? Well, it was the subject of a lot of discussion and it includes the discussion with the venue about what, what's their portion for the drinks and what are our costs going to be, what the magicians need to get. The math worked out that we, we thought that that was the right price point to cover the show, the show budget, what we anticipated that we would be spending on the various equipment that we need and bottled water for the performers backstage and you know all the all the little things and then the performers fees you know then some some payment to the venue for for cleaning so that was that was how that came out does that make sense or yeah yeah that makes total sense and i'm gonna ask more questions which of course you don't have to answer anything you don't want to i'm just thinking that people listening to this may be wanting to follow your journey and say oh can i replicate this or how can i do this so that's why i'm asking these questions it's also also let me let me also explain that in the research that i did looks to me like the the general the market we looked at a lot of comedy shows because there are more comedy shows going on than magic shows like this although there are a bunch of magic shows like this in new york the comedy shows it looked like are generally about a $20 ticket, but with a, a drink minimum and with the price of drinks and comedy clubs. That was kind of where we estimated you'd end up. And so we were looking at about a, a $20 ticket for the show, maybe a little bit more, but kind of in that range and then add the drinks to that. And so, it, you know, that was we also modeled off of that that show model. I'm of the mindset where people are willing to pay for a ticket when you know that you're paying magicians and you're paying staff $50. Somebody might say, oh, that's a lot of money for an hour and 15 minutes. To me, I, I don't think that at all. I think, no, I'm paying it for the time to enjoy myself. And I want to make sure that the people doing it are getting paid, you know, at least something, because otherwise, why are they even bothering? <laughs> it's a more expensive ticket then I would have said, hey, I'll put on a, you know, an hour and, an hour and a quarter magic show and charge $50. And that, that does feel like a lot. It's not just the magic show. You're getting two drinks. And in New York, those, those aren't cheap. The fact that it's a package, it's not just a show. It's the evening. You're having your evening out. And that's uh, you know, sort of all, all included. And it's in a really nice, uh, you know, the, the, the venue is, is cozy and full of plush couches and it just it creates a really nice atmosphere. So, you know, you get there a little early, you have a drink and you, you get ready for the show. And it's it's not like file in, sit down, file out. Wait, how early since I'm going to be coming to the 7 p.m. show? How early can I show up? <laughs> because I'm because I'm a lightweight. Uh -huh. So if I'm drinking two drinks, an hour and 15 minutes is actually too small of a time <laughs> for me. To, so how early can I show up before seven? So I, I'd suggest that you you could you could get there at six thirty. Okay. Because you know let, let's and let's face it, the more you've had to drink, the better the show. Okay. Is. Okay. Your words, not mine. I didn't say that. It might be truth in there. <laughs> I didn't say that. I think you're magicians, and you being one of them, I think you're all fantastic sober. Well, I mean, we are. 
It's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. It gets more magical. More mysterious. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'll be showing up early. Also, I just want to talk about something with me as an audience member. Yeah. I am a magician's worst audience member because I show up and I try to sit in a seat that is so hard to get to that there is no way the magician will ask me to volunteer because they don't want to slow down the show by having me get all the way out of the seat. So I go sort of like to the back or not quite all the back because I don't want to be the person in the back where they're clearly trying to avoid. So in this 30 person parlor. So you don't want to be picked, but you want to be subtle about it? Is that Yeah, yeah. I don't want to stand out like looking like, oh, that's the guy that doesn't want to be picked. Therefore, we'll pick him. I don't want to be that person. Uh huh. So anyway, in this 30 person venue, very intimate parlor, am I going to be able to hide? Well, I don't know if you'll be able to hide, but if you don't want to participate in the show, you don't have to. It's okay. Okay, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> and all right, so, and I understand that, you know, some magicians insist on pulling people up and, you know, my my policy for this show, and I, and I will tell the performers, is that the audience doesn't have to participate if they don't want to. We're not here to inflict magic upon people. You're here to see a show. If you don't want to come up on stage, you don't have to. We will only involve the willing. Okay, fantastic. All right. Not that I'm worried about that or anything, but I am worried about that. I'm totally calling you up. (laughs) And I will not be at the 7 p.m. show, nor will I be at the 9 p.m. show, because while you are joking, I can't risk it. No, no, I'm kidding. Of course. The only caveat to this is if I do get there at 630 and somehow I've finished my two drinks by the time the show starts, (laughs) I may be more willing. We want people to enjoy and some people want to enjoy and just sit back and watch. And other people really like to be part of the show and come up and and participate and let the magician borrow their their watch or their you know whatever and, and pick the card or or do whatever the thing is. Um, and some people really enjoy that and other people don't. We want you to enjoy the show in the way that you'll enjoy it. That's my phobia of magic shows is like there's no guarantee you're going to walk out of that place without having gone up on stage. It's a, <laughs> that's why sometimes I like the bigger magic shows because it's like, yeah, there's no way. Like if, you know, Darren Brown, he like throws Frisbees into the crowd to like pick his volunteers. If I were at that show and I caught the Frisbee, I would immediately hand it to anybody around me. Which is fine. And honestly, for as a magician, I would rather you do that. Because if you don't want to be up on stage, I don't want you on my stage. <laughs> if you don't, and it's okay. If you don't want to be here, that's fine. Stay where you are. You know, my audience volunteer, I want to invite somebody up who wants to be up here and wants to play. Why should I force people to do things they don't want to do? I'm with you. I'm with you. So we have two more episodes with you, which is a couple weeks out from the live show. We're going to check in with you, see if you're still in good spirits. (laughs) (laughs) And then we'll check in afterwards to see how it went, see if you're still in good spirits. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So everybody, uh, October 14th, that's the new scheduled date. I'll be at the 7 p.m. show with my two drinks arriving at 6.45 p.m. Whatever you like. (laughs) You're always welcome. Fantastic. We'll see. And then October 4th is when the third episode of this series will come out, um, where we're a couple weeks out. So everybody check back in on October 4th to see how the show is looking for October 14th. Oh, okay. Um, The pressure. (laughs) So, yes, it's going to be, well, it's going to be interesting because we we were sort of ramped up to, to go in a week. And then we pushed off. And so we'll, we'll have to see how, how the dominoes fall. First of all, congratulations on doing this. Producing a live show is sort of crazy. And you're actually doing two in one night. So sort of double the crazy. I know there's a lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself for this. But let me say that worst case scenario, worst case scenario, you sell out both shows, which is 60 people. And then you have two magicians. And yourself. So that's 63 participants. Worst case scenario, you waste an evening of 63 people's lives. That's the worst case scenario. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. Best case scenario, you take 63 people's lives and you give them a super enjoyable evening, which is what I suspect is going to happen. Well, I can tell you that of of all the things that I'm that I'm nervous about or have concerns about. Uh, the show is not among them. I've I've seen these performers. I know these guys, and they're fantastic. And I'm so thrilled to have them on the show. They are wonderful performers. They do exciting magic. They make really interesting artistic choices. I'm I'm just delighted to have them. 
uh, our virtual season one has really expanded my network and I've met so many great performers who bring so much of themselves to their art and they base their performance on their interests and backgrounds and, and personal style. And th this, this first live show is kind of a test of concept and I would love to do more live shows and bring some of these amazing performers who are not your run of the mill magicians. They're not the people that the world necessarily thinks of when they see, when they think of a magic show. They're, it, what they're doing is really exciting. And so of all the things that I'm, that I'm worried about that caused me to lose sleep and, and wake up in the middle of the night making lists in my little notebook about all the things that I have to do, the show itself is not one of them. The show is going to be fantastic. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing this journey with us. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. That was the second of four episodes following Flavors of Magic becoming Flavors Live. If you're thinking about putting together a magic show, I hope you can be encouraged by Sarah as she forges ahead. A reminder that the live show is October 14th. That seems far away, but tickets are already available for the 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. show. I'll be at the 7 o'clock show, so if you're in New York City on October 14th and decide to attend the show, be sure to find me and say hello. And if you don't know what I look like, here's how to find me. I'm of slender build, a pale white male, five foot eight inches tall, I have dirty blonde hair, and I'm usually wearing a button down shirt. But the dead giveaway is that I'll be sitting in the back as far from the action as possible, looking panicked anytime one of the magicians is searching for volunteers. So that's how you know who I am. For tickets, visit flavorsofmagic.com and I hope to see you there. Our next bonus episode will be October 4th, We'll catch up with Sarah a couple weeks out from the show and see how things are going. Our fourth and final episode about Flavors of Magic will be on October 25th. It will be a post-mortem to see how the show went artistically and financially, and to see if it went well enough to merit more Flavors of Magic shows in the future. To be notified on October 4th about our new episode, follow Artistic Finance on any podcast app, if podcasts aren't your thing, follow us on YouTube or on Instagram at Artistic Finance. If you want early access to the episodes, become a patron at patreon.com slash artistic finance. Patrons get a unique podcast feed with all bonus audio. They see the value of having artists openly discuss money and are making these conversations possible. If you aren't ready to become a patron, the next best thing is to leave us a podcast review on Apple Podcasts or comment on our YouTube channel. Thank you immensely for listening. If you have any feedback for the show, suggestions of guests or topics, please email us at artisticfinancepodcast at gmail.com and we'll do our best to read and respond. That's it for today. Until next time, break a leg. Thank you for listening to Artistic Finance. Make sure to subscribe. To access our show notes, transcripts, or resources, go to artisticfinance.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any decision, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Artistic Finance. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.